Adventures with Dice. Welcome. Welcome back to Adventures with Dice. I'm Rob and I'm your host for these videos. And in today we are in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Dragon Bane Bestiary. Bestiary. Bestiary, bestiary. Monster book. Hardback. Uh, now, full disclosure, like a lot of the Free League products that I get, this was sent to me from Free League uh, for purposes of review <clears throat> and gameplay, obviously. And uh, as always, that doesn't stop me from giving my honest review on stuff, but it's not hard to do because I usually like the stuff they send me. Um, been waiting on this for quite a while. I had the PDF. Look through the PDF. It looks really great. The monsters are really great. But we're going to take a look in the book today and I'm going to show you uh, what's in here, my thoughts on it, and uh, yeah, maybe it's something you want to pick up for your Dragon Bane game. Let's go to the other table. All right, so here we are, uh, the Dragon Bane Bestiary. This is a big old monster book. I say big old monster book. It's, it's a nice big book. Weighs in at uh, 147 pages. So we don't just get monsters in this book. We also get several new uh, playable races, playable kin that you can use in your game. And they're completely optional if you don't want to have them in your game or use them as player characters. You can use them as monsters or NPCs. So we open up, nice piece of artwork here. We have the cover art done by uh, Johan Erkinson, I believe, and uh, interior by David Braskella. We have our preface, which is a neat little story about the last journal entries of Theodora Sneezewart, uh, one of a kind, and what happened to her and her team. And then we have how to use this book, basically, and a list of playable kin in this game. Uh, and this is between the main book and this book. You have the half, uh, the human, the halfling, the dwarf, the elf, the mallard, the wolfkin, the orc, ogre, goblin, hobgoblin, frog people, carcion, cat people, lizard people, and satyrs. So the book does not list everything in just alphabetical order. It breaks everything into alphabetical order within groupings. So this first grouping that we're looking at is the nightkin. And the nightkin start with our goblins. I mean that art is oh, fantastic. We have them as scouts and warriors, NPCs over here for combat, but we also have the player character information if you want to use them as player characters. Each monster also comes with an adventure seed and a random encounter that can be used in the game. And these little blurbs by different uh, people who's, uh, ha who have entries in this journal. <clears throat> And that's really neat. Uh, I liked it a lot. So you have the Hobgoblin. Again, fantastic art. I'm probably going to say that a lot because I like most of the art in this book. You have the Ogre. Orc. And then we go into Rare Kin. So you have the Cat People. And again, this is something you can use as a player character with this information, or you can use them as NPCs that you're fighting with this information. And of course, your random encounters and, and uh, adventure seeds and very cool art. Uh, the centaur, uh, the art's okay on the centaur. I'm not blown away by it, but it's, it's, it's decent. The fairy art's really nice. And then the frog people. I don't know why you want to play a frog person, but if you do, the frog people are in here. Then we have the harassing harpies. These things are always a pain. Uh, this one I haven't read up much on, the Karkion. They are 
I don't know, they look like these weird cat, winged cat people or something. I'm going to have to read their little blurb to find out more about them. Then we have the lizard people, mermaids, and again, this is not a playable uh, NPC race. It is simply a monster, which comes with the monster attack tables. But they still have the adventure seed random encounters as well. Same thing on the Minotaur. Niad, Niad, probably saying that wrong. Satyrs, Swan Maiden, Treekin. And then we go into a section called Insectoids, where we have the Ant People, Beetle Kin, Spider Kin. That's just, that's super creepy. <laughs> that's just very creepy. Uh, then we go into our next section, which is Trolls. Each of these sections has a uh, fiction blurb right before it, too. Uh, we have the Cave Troll, the Forest Troll, the Mountain Troll, and then we go into Giants, again, with a fiction blurb. The Forest Giant, Mountain Giant, Sea Giant, the Titan. That's the last one. Then we go into Beast with another blurb here. Uh, the basil Basilisk, which is, I guess, weird to me because this is not how I envision a Basilisk looking. And that's probably due to my years of playing D&D &D and how they look in D&D. &D. But cool artwork nonetheless, and I'll probably still use my regular Basilisk minis. Uh, the Brook Horse, which I mistakenly, first time I looked at it, thought it said Book Horse, but it's the Brook Horse. Um, Caledon, Chimeras, Giant am oh, amoeb amoeb Amoeba, hmm. Basically like a gelatinous cube. We had to fight one of these Saturday night in an online game I played in. Me and my wife played in with a friend of mine. Uh, we have the giant octopus. The giant spider. That's a fan favorite of mine. We have the griffin. The hippogriff. The hydra. It's going to get hard to turn pages. I don't want to skip anything. Ah, the Manticore. The Manticore is one of my favorites. I actually just did a Manticore uh, model for using in Dragon Bane, which I 3D printed and painted it up. That's what I'm going to use for my Dragon Bane games and D&D uh, &D games as well. The Medusa. So the Medusa is odd to me here. And um, it even makes mention of it in the little fiction blurb about it's weird for the Medusa to have wings because wings is usually a gift. But uh, nevertheless, the Medusa in Dragonbane has wings, still has the ability to attack with the snakes and turn you to stone with her gaze and all that. <clears throat> but the, the wings is a little off-putting, and that may be my own ignorance. Um, I'm used to regular D&D &D Medusas um, or Clash of the Titans. I don't think she had wings. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been years since I watched that. The Pegasus. The Rock. Sea Serpent. Uh, just printed up and painted. Well, I hadn't painted it. I primed it. One of these. Uh, this was this past month's miniature from my mini factory and uh, Titan Forge miniatures for Dragon Bane was the, the Sea Serpent. Um, it looks amazing. It looks just like this. <laughs> I'm just going to have to paint it. Ah, the Werewolf. There's another one of my favorites. The Warg. And then we get into one of my favorite sections, Undead. We have the ghost, some really cool art on the ghost. The ghoul. The living dead, which is basically our zombies. Mummies, check that art out. That's just super cool. 
That skeleton is awesome. Just bask in the awesomeness of that dude. <laughs> A group of those coming at you would just freak you out. And then vampires, one of my favorites. And I know that in the uh, description, it talks about how some vampires, they, they all can appear differently and some of them roam uh, the city streets hunting for blood, but then some are just completely bestial like you see here. And I really like that. I like that they're not all just, you know, hopping around in formal wear. And then we have the white, which I've run him as a bad guy a few times now. The Will-O-Wisp. And then we get into our section on dragons. And we get a good selection. We get a hatchling dragon, some cool art, a young dragon. And, and mainly so as your characters progress and get stronger, they have stronger things to fight. You have the adult dragon, the ancient dragon, you know, check that out. He's fixing to eat him some stupid adventurers. The Linworm. And then <clears throat> we have a section on demons. We have the Blood Demon. That's pretty tight. The Chaos Demon. The Fire Demon. The Golem. The Guardian Demon. The Shadow Demon. And then we have our Index. And then that's the back of the book. With our Blood Demon on it. Uh, overall, I'm super pleased with it. I, I love most of the artwork. There's a few pieces that I'm like, eh, they're okay. None of them that I look at and just outwardly hate. Um... There are a few of the monsters from the main core book that are still in the main core book. They like giant bat swarms and stuff didn't make the translation over to this. And I wonder why other than just to make sure you have both books. But generally, if you're playing, you're going to have that book. I, I, on one hand, I appreciate them not reprinting information we already had. But on the other hand, it would be nice to have had my giant bats swarms in here so that when I'm playing a game, I don't have to have two different books open, which I probably won't. I have the PDF, so I'll probably just print out the sheet from the bats and stick it in here because I like to use bat swarms. But the quality and binding of the book is fantastic. It's very solid. <clears throat> I like the way it lays flat very easily. Um, the paper quality is really nice. It's not glossy. It's almost like a parchment style. Um, I'm very pleased with it, and I've been looking forward to getting my hands on it because I like to use physical books at the table. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I've been doing Dragon Bane solo stuff, so a lot of stuff from here is going to start seeing its way into my solo games that I put up on the channel. Uh, that's all I've got on this for right now. I hope that you enjoyed this look through it and maybe it, maybe that gives you a reason to go buy the book. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you look at it and go, oh, yeah, I don't like this or I don't like that. Whatever. Put your thoughts down in the comments. I like to read that kind of stuff. And until next time, my friends, good gaming and good luck.